Hi, my name is Charles Xi. I'm a senior design architect in Cadence IPG. Today is my second session on automotive functional safety. I would like to go into more detail about the benefit and the impact of the ISO 26262 functional safety standard. In order to achieve uh, functional safety at system level, the automotive industry is governed by a standard called ISO 26262. This is a system level standard that basically defines the engineering practice, the methodology, but also the design guidelines for both hardware and software in order to achieve uh, functional safety goals at the system level. So the ISO 26262 standard actually defines something called ASO levels. ASO stands for automotive safety integrity levels. There are really four levels, A being the lowest, D being the highest, and then with different ISO levels, there are different safety requirements and evaluation process that we have to go through. Even though the ISO 26262 standard is a system standard, but the requirement actually trickles down to the semiconductor components and to the IP level. For IPs, we actually are evaluating according to ISO 262 standard for multiple type of analysis. One analysis deals with uh, random failures called FMEDA, which is something that I'd like to talk more today. So basically, the FMEDA analysis assesses the strength of the IP when it's facing random failures. The way the process works is that we take the IP, we make certain assumptions of the usage model of the IP at system level, and we define the safety goals. And we associate the IP with the set of safety protection mechanisms that allow us to better achieve the safety goals. And then we go through a quantitative process to calculate the failure matrix in order to meet different ISO levels. There are two types of uh, failure matrix. One is called single point failure matrix. The other one is called latent multi-point failure matrix. The first one actually deals with uh, one single failure that might result in safety goal violation of the system. The other one deals with the situation that um, you know, when you put protection mechanism in place, you know, the normal function uh, fails at the same time, the safety protection me mechanism also fails. Per the standard, actually, if you put the safety function, uh, functional protection mechanism in place, we are dealing with a much lower um, failure target, uh, failure metric target. So this makes uh, it much easier to achieve the, uh, the uh, requirements by the standard. So let's talk specifically how this is, can be done. We use our automotive Ethernet Mackey as an example which we just com completed the FMEDA analysis. We take the design, we break it down into multiple functional blocks, AXI, DMA blocks, MAC blocks, you know, a time stamping unit, and a st a stats com uh, counters. Then we uh, assume some failure rate uh, using the industry accepted criteria for the IP as a whole. And this is typically done based on the the, 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 the gate count um, we assume for the IP, you know, the, um, the usage time, how long it has been in use, and also you know, the, um, the representative transistor failure rate uh, by a particular advanced node in the semiconductor process. So we divide the total failure rate and distribute them into different blocks. Um, then based on the functionality of each block and the associated functional safety goals, we impact, we assess whether the failure occur in particular block would result in safety goal violation. We assess both the uh, single point failure matrix and also the multi-point failure matrix. What we found out is that in this process, it's much easier for us to achieve the ISO uh, 26262 standard requirements if we have the protection mechanism in place uh, in, in the design. So in the next session, I will be talking about uh, specifically what type of safety protection mechanisms that should be considered for IP uh, in, in the IP development. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.